All right. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us. Another episode of Catching Up with Jacob. And uh, here's my friend that we miss him so much here in America. Jacob, I wish you were here with us, but we have you on Zoom. It's better than nothing. How are you doing today? Better than nothing for the time being. Praise Jesus. How am I doing today? Well, I'd be doing a lot worse if Jesus wasn't coming soon, but praise God he is. Amen. And Jacob, he is coming soon, very, very soon. A uh, couple of housekeeping things to uh, uh, Jacob. How did it go with those meetings? Uh, uh, I know you've had some meetings lately. Uh, how's your general feeling about the meetings and how people responded to those meetings? They're doing well, but we have some meetings coming up. Um, and I'll just announce them very briefly. I'll be coming to Liverpool in March. More about that. We'll announce that within the week. But we have the RTN Day Seminar uh, with Pastor Tim Leach and myself, February the 26th at 1 p.m. at St. Michael's Community Church, Bracknell Old Road in Stoke-on-Trent in the um, West Midlands of England. And that's on the uh, 26th of February, St. Michael's Community Church, Bracknell Road at 1 p.m. I'm sorry, Bucknell Road, 1 p.m. in Stoke-on-Trent. Also, we have the Moriel Conference on the 20th to the 22nd of May. Now, we've had some more news. Uh, Beryl, who organizes these meetings, was informed that they have liberalized COVID restrictions. So we're not going to have to have the same space requirements. You right. can observe space requirements. You optionally can wear a mask. It's the option to do that. There will be provision and sections for people who wish to do that, but it's allowed us to get more people in. We filled up, they gave us more spaces. That is almost filled up. So they've given us more spaces still. So we're still able to accept bookings. Um, we would have had to close it down by now, but that'll be the 20, 20th to the 22nd of May. Please visit Moriel, M-O-R-I-E-L dot org and go to the itinerary page and you can book for the May conference in England also. Uh, announcements for the Liverpool uh, meeting, which will be on a Saturday, um, that is going to come up this week. Um, looking forward to seeing our friends in Merseyside. Amen. Amen. Wonderful stuff, Jacob. Wonderful stuff. And uh, I'm glad things are going well with the uh, live meeting, especially with all the restrictions being lifted. And that seems to be happening not only in the UK, but other parts of the world soon to come maybe to our side of the world as well. Um, but nonetheless, Jacob, all your information and, and where you are and platforms online are on the description of this video. So if people can get a hold of the video, look under the description, find where Jacob is uh, pretty much in a lot of places, not only uh, online videos, but also on podcast. And there's several choices for podcasts from iTunes to Google to Amazon to Buzzsprouts. There is quite a bit of choices there wherever you can find Jacob. So uh, Jacob, we're trying to make it easier to find at least your content easier to find. Yeah. And uh, people are very happy about that. So praise the Lord for that. Praise With God. all that said, Jacob, let's get started and catching up. Uh, Jacob, do you remember the movie Mad, Mad, Mad World? I believe it was 1965. I remember uh, very well. much. Yeah, comedy to some degree. But it was about a bunch of different characters within the movie chasing after $350,000, which would have been a lot of money back then. And uh, it takes place it takes place here in the, in the States, in California. Uh, very much um, a comedy of all kinds of different uh, actors and actresses of the day. Uh, a very interesting movie. Um, it reminded me, just thinking about the movie, it reminded me of our world. Um, mad, mad, mad world. Um, that's been a long time since that movie was made. I think they should remake it with all the stuff going on today. They tried to, but it, well, the remake was not quite as good as the original. These things never are. Although John Lovitz was extremely funny in the remake, uh, the original is the classic among classics. Amen to that. And uh, well, I think uh, it fits in our world. Mad, 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 mad world. And uh, I think the, 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 the most maddening thing of all is the fact that uh, we had Davos, the meeting of the World Economic Forum in Davos. And we haven't talked about that too much, but it just finished late January. We wanted to talk about that. 
because I think it's it's it serves significance of what we're going to see over the next few years. Um, every time the World Economic Forum meets, of course, there's uh, uh, high alert. What they talked about, what they did, what they said. There's a lot of things they implement in our world, and uh, they're very much part of infiltrating government and wanting to put their own people in their cabinets. And they're very proud of that. Very proud of Argentina, Canada, France, etc. And uh, but lo and behold, during the meeting. They, they literally bequeath the, the new world order and the way the World Economic Forum is going to go and, and how the world's going to be shaped to none other than Xi Ping from China. And boy, was Schwab excited to introduce him. And uh, um, Jessica, just get, Jake, I want to get your thoughts on, on the World Economic Forum bequeathing that, that title to Xi Ping, the leader of the new world order. As I said, when China lied about the Beijing Olympics, about freedom of communication and internet communication and use of cell phones, it lied to the world. So they decided to give it another chance so it could lie again about the Winter Olympics. This is the International Olympic Committee. It's just a pathetic, politicized joke. However, what's not so funny is the World Economic Forum. That is a serious, serious it would be a joke if, if it was a comedy, but it's not a comedy. These people are dead serious. They're out of their mind, but they're dead serious. This is the globalist forum. I am not a conspiracy theorist. I've been warning about conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists for years. I've been warning about conspiracy theories in the church masquerading as discernment and prophecy, but we are well beyond that. This is not a conspiracy theory. These things are actual reality. You just look how they can parade the leader, the dictator of China, ignoring the human rights abuses, the persecution of Christians, even the persecution of Muslims, the Uyghurs right. in, in, in Western China. Ignoring, ignoring. And if you've been to China, you know what I mean, the environmental catastrophe ignoring the economic house of cards in, in, in their real estate development and the banking system that's tied to it, ignoring the realities. They expect people to ignore reality. The subjective becomes the objective. The objective is negated. This is again, well, Ben Shapiro made a good comparison to Orwell's view of 1984, where objective truth would not matter. The objective historical facts or realities would be simply negated by the right. party line. Well, he's, he was absolutely correct. I agree with what, what he said. But of course, we've been saying the same thing ever since our brother Dave Hunt was still with us when we did the message, um, the death of reason, the death of reason. Objective right. truth is suspended in favor of this new subjective reality. I watched a clip of, the, of Senator Rand Paul, who himself is a physician. He's an ophthalmologist and an eye surgeon. He's a, he's a medical professional, as was his father, is his father. And he was questioning Richard Levine, now Rachel Levine, who had himself surgically altered. Right. And he was and he, Levine was there as a woman, trying to look like a woman or whatever, just like a woman, legally recognized as a woman, despite the DNA. And Dr. Paul, Senator Paul, was confronting him about all of the medical stats and even the admissions of the World Health Organization concerning gender mutilation. And Levine could not answer he said, when I get the position, I'll be happy to meet with you in your office to discuss the complications of, of, of the course. challenges of transgender medicine. And he said it twice, the utter yep. hypocrisy. Um, you suspend reason. You have these XY chromosome males who've been surgically altered in competitive sports against women, despite their orthomuscular advantage. And you have to legally accept it. Objective reality goes out the window in favor of subjective. Now, again, if you listen to our original teaching and the sequel to it on the days of Noah, 
we warned one of the things that was going to happen is with the development and evolution of virtual technology, people would subjectively create their own realities. Objective truth would not matter anymore. They would think they're Cinderella or Napoleon or Elvis, and that's who they're <laughs> going to be. It won't matter to them. You're going to see virtual technology coming into play in this sociological trend and in the socio socio-psychological trend of a mass gravitation away from objective reality, away from undeniable truth in favor of a subjectively constructed, politically motivated and driven narrative that is absurd. It is beyond 1984, although Orwell did certainly have a premonition of what was coming. He, of course, based it on Stalin's Russia. <clears throat> but, but that's what's coming. And well, that certainly is what's coming. The death of reason. We, we first called it that some years ago. I recall when I first did it with, with Brother Dave Hunt, and uh, who's now with Jesus. Uh, I knew this then, and I think other people knew it then. I certainly don't think I was the only one. But I said it at this conference with Dave Hunt, and it's not that I was correct. It's I, I, I was, okay, I was correct, but I didn't realize the momentum and the pace these trends would gain, how fast right. it was going to happen. I am astounded. I don't see my predictions as being prophetic. I see them as perhaps intellectually sanctified deductions, okay, um, and, and examining those deductions in light of the word of God. I didn't say I was prophesying, but it, it's been on the money. It's been on the money. And others have said similar things that were prophesying. Go back and read The Vision by David Wilkerson, written in the early 1970s. Just look at what happened. It's what the Lord showed him. Things in the church that A.W. Tozer predicted 60, 70 years ago. Things that Francis Schaeffer predicted in the 1960s and 70s. It has come to it. And it's not conspiracy theory. It is tangible reality. Praise God, Jesus is coming. Yeah, it, it just seems like the World Economic Forum, Jacob, the, uh, the meeting that they had, they they, they, I think they're foregoing some of the things that have been going on, the lockdowns, the passport, the virus, ready for a new agenda. Uh, on the agenda, climate change, locking down disinformation, cyber attacks, internet control, food regulations. This is what their main objective was in trying to discover the new world or the great reset, as they call it. So uh, Xi is the new, uh, the, the new captain, I suppose. He's going to usher in this uh, social credit system that China has. A brutal, brutal dictator is the man they're applauding. Schwab is a wicked, wicked man. Mm. Biden is a wicked, wicked man. These men are controlled by Satan, and I'm not exaggerating. That's great. Jacob, I, I have a question, and, and perhaps you can uh, illuminate some, some, um, some realities here. Uh, the Bible speaks of 10 kings. The book of Daniel, the book of Revelation speaks of 10 kings. In fact, at the end of Revelation, these 10 kings who give the power to the beast for one hour, it says they will make war against the lamb and against those who come with the lamb. Uh, now, we, we can discuss what the 10 kings, who they're going to be and all that stuff. Uh, but we're seeing, a, as in a way, a shadow of the 10 kings. These, these uh, unelected globalists in the World Economic Forum, these unelected officials who sit there without being elected by anybody and, 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 and command people and private sectors and individual citizens to obey their every whim. They're very anti-Christian, very, pers uh, very much in the persecution of Christians along uh, other people. Uh, what's your take on the 10 kings and how will they, they, in your opinion, how will they form toward the end of the age? Okay, we deal with this subject in the book Shadows of the Beast that I wrote, How the Faithful Church Will Recognize the Antichrist. In that book, when I address this particular issue of the 10 kings, one of the things I pointed out is it's not the EU and it's not NATO. It's the countries that are both EU and NATO. They come to 10. 
but also something I've been saying, something that Tony Pierce in England has said, and some others. And it's beginning to take shape as an increasing possibility that these 10 are 10 politically organized trade blocks, the EU being one, okay, um, the Mexico-America-Canadian agreement being another, Com you know, Comic-Con being one, the, the Caribbeans have one, ASEAN Southeast Asia has one. Some would say the BRAC being one of, of, of Brazil, Russia, India, the BRIC. However you want to look at the configuration, 10 organized politically controlled economic trade blocks. That is becoming more and more possible. Um, we talked about it for some years, and so did Tony Pierce. I'm not saying again, I don't want to give people the impression I'm the only one who has said these things, or I'm speaking prophetically, or I'm not the only one who said these things. There were some others saying it at the same time. Some people said some of these things even before. But um, there'll be 10 individuals, but these individuals will personify the, the blocks. Now, if you were to put it into a purely European perspective, what's known as the WEU, the Western European Union, countries that are both NATO and EU, okay? That is the only way you can, because there's too many countries in the EU now. I've always felt that the people who were saying, as soon as there's 10 countries in the EU, that's gonna be it. I always felt they were being speculative and naive. I don't wanna be speculative and I certainly don't wanna be naive. But remember, he, they, they give the power for one hour. These things will happen quickly when they happen. They will take place very quickly. And only those who know the word of God ahead of time and are illuminated by his spirit will know what it is and what to do. The rest will be taken to the cleaners and they're not coming back. Mm. Very true. In fact, it says those kings make war with the lamb. They make war with the lamb. This yes. is Revelation 17. They make war with the lamb and against those. And then the lamb will overcome them. And, uh, and it will even fight at those who are with them and are called chosen and faithful. So uh, these 10 kings, these 10 regions, these 10 blocks, economic blocks, uh, however, ends up being uh, are, are definitely anti-Christian and anti-Christ and anti-Bible. Uh, and, and we could see that today. It's, it's forming and it's, it's very much part of their agenda is to make this world, in their words, more inclusive Yes, but look at the development of subcutaneous implantation. Oh, yeah. Microchips. They speak about it as if it's nothing. It's simply a advance in technology, a new practicality. They speak about it with absolutely an indifference to what the scripture says and warns about. Or yeah. they're not aware of it. Who are the only ones who are aware of it, saved Christians, and not all of them. We've yeah. had cases, I've known of cases in South Africa and in the United States, where you had evangelical preachers, quote unquote, saying it would be okay to take it. Wow. Well, you know, we have John MacArthur here that uh, believes you can take it and is still repent after that. That's correct. Yeah. And, and, and it seems to be more and more people seem to be um, even in the evangelical world seems to be that's the case that's you know it's not the unpardonable sin and so therefore you know even if you go down that road you can still come back this is the working of the devil read revelation chapter 14 read revelation mm -hmm. chapter 20 read revelation yeah. chapter 16 whoever takes the mark they're going to the lake of fire yeah it's interesting how these things jacob they're politically on, on the front on the front, it, it looks politically, it looks economically, it looks uh, very much part of this world system. When you start peeling back 
you start seeing what the scriptures has always warned us about. You start seeing what Paul said about not wrestling against flesh and blood. You see the book of Revelation coming to coming to pass. And, and that's that's incredible. That's really one of the things the Bible is such an amazing book is that it really points to the fact that it's a supernatural book. It tells you things in advance, even though you may see it as just political thing. You know, well, Schwab wants to do this politically. It's more than that. It's, it's much as a that. spiritual it's thing. True. Yes. But unless the Holy Spirit quickens and enlightens somebody to that reality, they're not going to see it. They're not going to see it. Or Amen. they will reinterpret it in accordance with their own desires instead of interpreting it exegetically. Yeah. They're not going to see it. If, if the, we had not been in a post-Judeo-Christian society, these things wouldn't be plausible. The only reason they have plausibility is because they're in a post-Judeo-Christian society. Look, Satan has the nations. He has Israel up to a point. He has the Gentile nations. And he has the apostate church. Now he's going after the one remaining thing that knows the reality and understands what's happening the faithful church. And if you can get, as you say, somebody like John MacArthur to put out a false message, a dangerously false teaching, that it will be possible to take the mark of the beast, it's not the unpardonable sin. If, if you can get somebody like MacArthur putting that kind of teaching out among the supposedly faithful church, it shows Satan's desperation, but it shows the vulnerability. There's a verse in Micah, and it uses the Hebrew word aloof. Aloof is the modern Hebrew word for a general. But in biblical Hebrew, it means the lead steer of a herd. And it says, don't follow the aloof. Be careful about following leaders. If anybody tells you it must be right because Jacob Prash said it, <laughs> no. If anybody tells you it must be right because John MacArthur said it. You follow Jesus, you don't follow men. You can follow Jacob Prash to the exact extent he's following Jesus. No further. You keep your eyes on him. You can follow me to the extent I'm following him. You can follow any leader to the extent they're following him. But when you have somebody who's a recognized leader saying it's going to be possible to take the mark of the beast, it's not the unpardonable sin, and still be saved, that's a leader you should not follow. That's a dangerous man. Amen. And I guess the church has succumbed to a lot of things. But one of the things that it's, it's really dangerous, Jacob, is the idea of eschatology has been abandoned. And even those who say that they preach eschatology and follow, let's say, strict hermeneutic on eschatology, they also side with, uh, you know, dangerous ideas that, uh, you know, the, the, the church or the believer doesn't have to go through any tribulation. They'll just be rescued out with no problem. They're, they're, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the mark. Don't worry about the Antichrist. Don't worry about apostasy. And so even those who would say, oh, I follow a strict hermeneutic on, on eschatology, they also have a very westernized idea of eschatology of escapism and no troubleism. That's correct. But don't tell that to the followers of John Wycliffe or to William Tyndale. Don't tell that to the Oxford Martyrs. Don't tell that to the early Christians. That is a very commercial, a commercialist consumerist concept masquerading as theology propagated mm -hmm. by people who are influenced by a false teacher and a virtual cult founder, John Nelson Darby. Uh, but we've talked about this many times. Yes, pre-tribulationism is one of the lies of Satan that is going to attempt uh, with some success to mislead saved Christians into believing a lie to prevent them from being ready for what's coming and to prevent them from being ready to react to it in the way the scripture says they're going to have to know how to. Pre-tribulationism is another. Uh, the word faith, you don't have to suffer. You're a king's kid. is certainly, certainly another. Um, you even have brazen 
brazen mockery of it. When you have people like Gerald Coates in England saying the rapture or is a, a fantasy and a myth, or Rick Joyner's people, the raptures of the devil. When you have people like Chris Rosebro and his son, you know, the, the, the F word guys, um, say, mocking, mocking those who believe in the mark of the beast and who believe in a literal antichrist and who are saying the church has been in the tribulation and in the millennium, both simultaneously for 2000 years. And, and he, he's in discernment circles. There's people who are into discernment who listen to these people. Look, Satan has got the nations. He's got Israel. He's got the apostate church. And now he's trying to get the believing church. And he's making a great job of it. It is very frightening. It, it always, um, it's always eye-opening, Jacob, where Jesus speaks of this parable of the wise and foolish virgins. There's 10 of them, but only five are actually the ones that have the, the oil and the lamp. And uh, the other ones seem to have it, but they don't have the oil. They, they seem to be dressed, ready to go, but they're not. That's right. If you don't believe, if you don't believe that we have to identify the Antichrist before the rapture, you're a foolish virgin. If you believe it's going to be possible to take the mark of the beast, like John MacArthur teaches, and still be saved, you're a foolish virgin. If you believe that there's no Antichrist, there's no falling away, there's no, if you believe what Roseboro's people believe, you're a foolish virgin. Now, they can be brazen, they can be assertive, they can be dogmatic, they can be angry. The foolish virgins are going to know they were foolish, but it will be too late. Don't be one of them. Yeah, it is interesting, Jacob, when you when you look at the World Economic Forum and Schwab and his books and what he's talking about, the fourth industrial revolution and, and the virus and, and how his desire, I mean, he makes it no, no qualms about it. They make no qualms about it. They've invited Google, DARPA, uh, Pfizer about developing uh, uh, medicine that could actually uh, help you comply uh, traceability, compatibility, and compliance uh, electronically uh, by putting tattoos on your hands and all kinds of stuff or a pill in your stomach. And they're brazenly talking about something that I think every Christian would know is very similar to uh, a mark that would be able to you be in compliance with whoever's running it. Plus, they want to control the world's food supply, food supplies, like not eating meat, going vegan, even, uh, you know, that, <laughs> that, that, that crazy video of that lady, Carol Adams, about, you know, connecting uh, uh, eating meat to misogyny. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's, it's misogyny and, and racism. There's people who believe it and agree with it. There are stupid <laughs> people. There are people who are that stupid. Even it, educated people who are that stupid. Yeah. Well, she has a PhD. She's written books and people claim her to be a, you know, a spokesperson for veganism. And, but anyway, this is, this is a world economic forum controlling natural resources, not only the supply, but the natural resources where it comes from. When you start connecting the dots, you'd be like, well, that sounds like Revelation 13. You could control economic, the world economically by virtue of a permit, which will be compliance with their desires. Two things, Marco, in relation to what you just said, just two comments, please. The first is, again, going back to the, even the first version of just as it was in the days of Noah, and we're talking 25 years at least. There's been an updated version. What I stated then was these technologies are going to come into play in the name of legitimate medical application to benefit sick people, dying people, things of this nature. You're going to see medicine, medical science, something that appears humanitarian as a platform to infiltrate these technologies geared towards population control and economic control into society. Nobody ever heard of COVID when I said that, but I just saw it coming. As we always said, it'll be like nuclear energy. Anything that can be used for good in the hands of fallen man will ultimately be used for evil. 
we warned that medical science and humanitarian pretenses were going to be the way that these dangerous controlling technologies would be implemented and sold to the general public. And boy, has it happened. Now, that does not make me a prophet, but it does mean it's happening. <laughs> uh, Nonetheless, it's happening. Yeah, that's, it's right. happening. that's right. Now, as, as, as to what you said about these people with the climate control and the, uh, of course, the, the, the vegan agenda, the, being a vegetarian and non carnivorous Acts 10, God created these foods <laughs> for us. Jesus ate lamb and fish. This is obvious. Um, what are they saying? They're saying what Paul warned about. They will be teaching doctrines of demons, forbidding certain foods. There is a demonic power on back of Professor Adams. There's a demonic power on back of these crackpots with PhDs. Uh, because you have a PhD doesn't mean you're smart. It just means you're <laughs> persistent. Um, it, may, it, may mean you, it may mean that you're not a, don't have a learning impairment, but it doesn't mean that you're clever. It doesn't. Anybody can get a PhD. Uh, of yeah, and it doesn't mean that you're. And it doesn't mean that you're good, no, or have good intentions not. for humanity. Certainly <laughs> not. But it's a doctrine of demons. As for the climate change, again, you have to ab ignore the objective facts. The evidence for climate change suggests that to the degree it may exist, it's like El Nino. It's part of a normal meteorological cycle. It is not humanly induced. And it is a diversion away from pollution. And if you want to see runaway, unbelievable pollution, go to Jing's China. Mm. You would not believe the pollution in China. Mm. They lose probably close to a million people a year wow. on pulmonary chest diseases alone due yeah. to toxic fumes being inhaled on a massive, massive level in these huge population centers. Yeah. The irony is to, is to have Xi Peng, the head of the CCP, uh, be the guy in control of this. Where, where China has massive, massive problems with climate change and pollution and all kinds of issues. Climate change, meaning that it's, not, it's, it's, it's if they're trying to prevent carbon emissions, China has no, uh, there's no regulation in China, and yet he's ahead of it. So it's a racket. Some yeah, people well, see it, some people don't. China but, gave the world, from, from Wuhan, China gave the world COVID. And they make him a hero. He didn't warn the world, but they make him a hero. He's lied about the Olympics again, the same as did the previous Olympics. They make him a hero. He's violating yeah. human rights. They make him a hero. Yeah. Persecuting he wants to Christians, give the world. They make him a hero. That's right. And he, and he wants to give the world, you know, the, the digital yuan. This will be the, 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 the currency of the world, the digital yuan. He wants to make the, what did he say? The, the dragon and the tiger? That's this right. will be their year. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there's a lot of things we could say about that. But uh, uh, Jacob, just quick thought on uh, because you're seeing this this sort of response to the World Economic Forum, and of course they're very proud of Trudeau and his cabinet in Canada. But now you see a protest it, it, that is gaining a lot of momentum. Is the the the, the honking, the trocopolis, as they, as they call it, uh, working people, working class people say enough is enough with the mandates and. In the way you've treated Canadians, the way you've treated working people, you call them racist, misogynist, uh, terrorists, you name that they call them. Now they've they've gone into Ottawa protesting peacefully. Now Canada has gone into a state of emergency in Ottawa. They're forbidding honking. I mean, the, uh, honking your, your horn in the car. They're forbidding uh, cans, gas cans in the city. Uh, they're even implying about bringing child protective services against those who have their children with them. Uh, to see if they're in compliance with school 
it, it's it's becoming a, a, a you know I guess a, 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 a I guess a spark that is lighting up a lot of fuel into uh, people's minds of what these people are trying to do to the rest of humanity. We struggle not against flesh and blood. People like Trudeau or Andrews in Victoria in Australia or Adern in New Zealand or the Joe Obama administration. These people will before long, sooner or later, but before long with some of them, be joining Ruth Gordon Ginsburg and Desmond Tutu and Harry Reid. It's not about them. We have to understand there is satanic power on back of them. And that is what we'll be talking about this week on Word for the Weekend in, in part. There's a satanic power. There are principalities on back of these things. These corrupt leaders are being demonically animated. That's right. Um, no doubt the lies and hypocrisy left and right. It is a spiritual battle. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, you see it played out in the world. You see what's going on in Canada. You see what's going on in, uh, in Australia and New Zealand. I don't know if they're going to have one here in the States from but California. Canada, to and Canada, New Zealand and Australia. And to a degree, Israel are for all intent and purposes, no longer democratic countries. Functionally, they're no longer democracies. Yeah, it's crazy how they talk about follow the science, follow the science. Well, they have scientists who would like to discuss these things in terms of the variants and the virus. They, 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 they ignore them, call them terrorists, massage, whatever. So no one's following the science, even though you remember the doctor in, uh, in South Africa. She's the head of the health department in South Africa. Uh, she came out very, very openly, very brazen against those who try to quiet her because they told her about the Omicron. Don't say it's mild. Don't say it's mild. Don't bring it out. And so even the science is being discredited by people in science saying, of course, it's not about the health issue, but they made it political science, not and real fake science. science. Fake science. Yes. When yes. you have perhaps the chief pioneer of the biogenetic engineering used to make the vaccine for COVID, which is messenger RNA, mRNA manipulation. Just like Stalin's Russia or Hitler's Germany, it's a political decision. It's not a scientific one, but they're calling it science. You have fake news. We now have fake science. We've always had fake science with, with Darwinism and so forth, but now it's fake science on steroids. <laughs> now, Jacob, it's interesting. Some of these uh, narratives are being changed. Uh, I was watching uh, the doctor that, that comes out on CNN, and uh, she's Leanne Wen, who, you know, by all intended purposes, would have probably put us in prison uh, at the beginning of the, of the virus season. Uh, but she comes out and says, you know what, we need to change our mind on science and we need to lift all these restrictions. All of a sudden, she says restrictions, they shouldn't be. They should be a choice. I don't know if she's watching what's going on in Canada or she's uh, seeing the wind change. But all of a sudden, California, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware are all desiring to end their mandates because, uh, you know, kids are literally walking out of school. High school students are, are not staying in class because they're being mandated to, to be in another classroom, to be in a frozen, uh, in outside and freezing weather. They're walking out and all of a sudden, doctors are changing their minds. CNN is changing their mind. Uh, it just seems about a, hypocr a lot of hypocrisy. There's also going something on. else. There's also, re remember, you, when you deal with the political establishment, you're dealing with people who have no scruples, no morals, no fear of God, nothing that would in any way resemble a sense of ethical responsibility. The people are just totally unprincipled. They have less, you know, they, they have less scruples than a pimp or <laughs> they, yeah, they have less scruples than a pimp. In fact, in a political sense, that's what they are, pimps. And the people who listen to them are their whores. But what they care about, 
power, money. They know there's a congressional election coming up in which they're going to face a battering and they will change their tune. Remember, Ben Shapiro likes to think, or he seems to think, and he's not completely wrong, that these people really ideologically believe if you give me the power, I can straighten it out. Just give us the power. He thinks that they believe that, that, that they can really ultimately do good. Maybe some of them do, but there is an agenda. I think he's said something that's true, but he's overlooking the full spectrum of, of, of what is happening. These people are about the preservation of political power and position. And they fear what's going to happen electorally. They also fear about the exodus of medium size and even some large businesses from blue states to places like Texas and Tennessee and Florida. They fear this kind of stuff. Uh, so their motives are political and economic. Just look at it like anything else. They don't care about the things they claim to care about. Just this week, Biden made war concessions to Iran. The worst women's rights record in the world. They execute homosexuals. So when it's politically expedient for the mainstream media and social media and the Democratic Party and other such pimps to play the feminist card and yell about misogyny and you know and about racism, well, they'll play that card. That's right. When it's not to their advantage. They don't care about the human rights in Iran or that homosexuals get hung or that women get flogged. They don't care about what happens to Muslims in China. It's not about that. These are people with no scruples. You're talking about somebody who is nothing more than a pimp. Jacob, speaking of Biden, speaking of Biden. Uh, okay, a clear pimp. Pimp. <laughs> He's a <laughs> Uh, speaking of him, uh, Real Clear Politics came out with a new uh, poll. Uh, he's in the Richard Nixon category now, mid-30s, even among liberals, even among independents. And, and of course, uh, conservatives, that's another story. It's, it's high on the 90 percent side that he's uh, on uh, disapproval. But 30 percent, 30, 35 percent. How is this man still in power? Uh, they're asking him to take a cognitive test. He refuses. He gets angry about it. it even Republicans that some of them are no good, are saying, well, it's obvious that the world sees that you're not fit for this job, but the, he doesn't want to take a cognitive test. This man's in decline. His, his, his uh, administration's in decline. He's doing a lot of damage on the way down. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, Jacob? I watched the interview by a very, very fair journalist, a Black American guy. I don't know what his political orientation is. I don't know, but he was a fair journalist, at least in his conducting of the interview with Biden. And he asked Biden, are you going to take the test? And Biden says, no, I didn't take that test. Why should I? Well, first of all, although Donald Trump exhibited absolutely no symptomatic indications of senility or, or of dementia, or of any of that. He, he gave no indication. The left-wing media began suggesting it and demanding he take a cognitive test with no symptoms exhibited publicly. Well, he took the test and he has normal cognitive function. He has no particular geriatric deterioration. He has absolutely nothing that would be symptomatic of senility or of dementia, nothing. Mm, that's right. Biden does, <laughs> and he begins yelling, "Why should I?" Well, where's the media? I'll nah. tell you why you should. You, you, they wanted Trump to take it when there were no symptoms, but when Biden exhibits symptoms, it's another story. It just shows the hypocrisy of the media. That's, right. that's right. Why should I? That's what he said. 
because half the country thinks that you're senile. How can you possibly lead when you don't have the confidence of at least 50% of the people, even in your yeah. cognitive ability? That's right. This That's is right. the Ronald reality. Jackson. And yeah, the Ronald Democratic Jackson Party have stuck themselves with this useless joke of a vice president who nobody likes or respects. Nobody, except for a handful of very, very stupid people. Nobody likes or respects her. Even many Democrats, she couldn't win a primary in the Democratic Party. <laughs> Nobody likes or respects her, nor should they. Yeah. She's worthy. And she's, she's a vice president. Yeah. She's worthy of no respect. She was chosen for political reasons uh, to, to, to try to consolidate minority votes and things and feminist votes. And That's then right. Biden, he couldn't win a primary either initially until the <laughs> party establishment united on back of him. And they have yep. the superdelegates, of course. There's nothing democratic yeah. about the Democratic Party. The superdelegates can throw the nomination how they want to, pretty much, or at least come very close to doing so. And they yeah. just wanted to keep Sanders out. They didn't want an open Bernie's socialist Bernie. because they knew he would not win. Um, so they had to get somebody, and they got Biden. They stuck themselves with two incompetent losers, one mm. of which is apparently losing his mind. Yeah. They stuck themselves Absolutely. with him. And you're going to see people like Hillary Clinton and all these others smelling yep. blood and looking for opportunity. <laughs> um, you know. She's going to be there at the DNC. Yeah. Well, if Hillary Clinton was diagnosed with, dement with, with dementia or senility, it would be a big improvement in her mental faculties. Oh, uh, yes. Well, some people believe that she might want to throw her head in the ring for 2024. Yes. And that's one of the reasons they are uh, bringing her at the DNC. But uh, mental decline, mental decline, nonetheless. Uh, but his own State Department and DHS and DOJ, uh, actually, the DHS issued a terrorist uh, alert. You know what the terrorist alert is? Anybody that disagrees with the government will be considered a misleading or believing in misleading narratives about the government or conspiracy theories about the government will be considered a terrorist, just like what they did with the parents, just like they did with the parents who were in disagreement with the school board. This is the third uh, right coming to Washington. This is the Gulag Archipelago comes to Washington. Yeah, I think I think maybe those books should be uh, uh, should be mandatory reading for high school students now. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know. So a lot of them don't don't. Animal Farm, Gulag Archipelago. Uh, but yes. Biden is on yeah. the it's on the attack, Jacob. The uh, there's a bill in Florida that uh, the state legislature and uh, who passed it and Ron DeSantis said he will sign it. It is under the name or the number SB one eight three four, which is basically you're not allowed to teach little kids about uh, sexual orientation, that it's above their cognitive ability to understand. Uh, you're not allowed to do it without parent consent. You're not allowed to teach kids about uh, critical race theory, criti critical gender theory. It's above them. This is not to be allowed without parent consent. The State Department and Mr. Biden, the White House, came out and said, this is a hateful attack on gays, a hateful attack on the LGBTQ. They're on the offensive against anybody that this, and this is, this is blatant. The, 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 the things that they're teaching kids, an attack on kids, you mentioned this quite a bit of times, but now this bill is trying to protect kids. He says, you're attacking gays. You know, what they would love to be able to do, as I've said before, is turn the Supreme Court into an unelected super legislative body to impose it the way they impose same-sex marriage in contravention of the Constitution. Um, anybody uh, in the Supreme, any justice who voted for same-sex marriage violated the Constitution and should be impeached as a, as a justice. Mm, the Constitution mm. is clear. If the Constitution is silent on an issue, it's for the states to decide. It acted right. completely unconstitutionally. The Supreme Court acted completely unconstitutionally. Well, yeah. th their best strategy would be to have the Supreme Court impose these things. Right now, oh, they're having yeah. problems doing that. But that would be yeah. what they'd like to do is to pack the court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which comes into play in that they're trying to push the, the Supreme Court justice out and try to bring another super leftist Marxist liberal into the yes. Supreme Court. 
uh, uh, his, his choice would be a black woman. And uh, he would like to bring other, he would like to pack the courts for that very reason. And there you have it. There you have a, a, an abandonment of constitutional uh, republic elections. All those things are going to be yes. up in the air, especially with Biden. Uh, but I like what DeSantis says, Jacob. This is uh, schools needs to be teaching kids science, history, arithmetic, uh, civic duties, understanding the Constitution. This is why are we teaching kids about theories, critical race theory, critical gender theory, and especially when their parents are opposed to that. Now, this is common sense, but I guess it's oh, not uh, it's, it's not common within the Biden. You know what it is common in the Biden administration is to hire uh, extreme left wing right, uh, activists, you could say, uh, in extreme. I don't know what you would put this under what category, Jacob, but the Department of Energy is going to hire Sam Britton. He's going to be the head of spent fuel and waste disposition deputy. Uh, Sam Britton. Uh, was recently hired, I should say. Uh, he's into a lot of interesting things. I don't know if uh, I showed you the picture of, of it. A form of, I guess you'd call it sadomasochistic homosexuality, where his partners are dressed up like animals, like dogs, in, in, in his sexual proclivities. And it's photographic. And this is who Biden appoints. Or Levine, this so-called transsexual who now calls himself racial, couldn't answer the questions of, of, of Senator Paul. And Biden makes him a four-star admiral. <laughs> he never served, never served in the Navy a day in his life. Now he's a four-star admiral. What this is, is, is something I've been saying for some time. The kind of situation that the early Christians faced in the first century Caligula would would pronounce a horse a, a proconsul or member of the Senate. He would say his son was his daughter. The emperors would decree these things that were obviously insane, but they had to be legally accepted and approved by the Senate and accepted by the citizenship because Rome was no longer a republic. It was an imperial dictatorship. Well, we're going back to the same thing. I have been saying this for nearly 30 years. Only now it's happening. 30 years ago, I said it was coming. Now I'm saying it has come. It is here. Yeah, it, it's it's no longer that. And I, I, I was talking on Wednesday about, you know, we, we keep saying, you know, America is, you know, God is going to judge America. I think God has or is judging America yes. at this point based on yes. Romans 1. Now, things will get worse, of course, in the book of Revelation. You have the, 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 the wrath of God, but the judgment of God is already here. It's not coming. It's already here yes. through the political leaders, through the uh, sexual perversion that we see, through the violence that we see. I showed you the picture of Chicago and the, the yes. neighborhoods in Chicago. Yes. Uh, it, it, the, but the leaders, Lightfoot says the violence in Chicago is due to, is due to um, uh, uh, online education. <laughs> I don't know how you could do it. But uh, Jacob, one thing for sure, the, the, the media is not reporting any of this. You, you have to go to independent media. You have to almost watch this episode to kind of find out what's, what's happening. Uh, I've been catching up with Jacob. People uh, have enjoyed it. Uh, but also the fact that CNN, you know, CNN is like a sex club masquerading as a network. It, it really has no no interest in truth or, 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 or news. <laughs> it's just basically sexual activities of all sorts, of all sorts. Praise in God the for the beginning of his judgment on social and mass media. With Zucker, they're not with be Goldberg, but certainly with, with Zucker. Certainly with CNN's ratings. Down 90% over a year. Now, only one-tenth of the viewership you had a year. And then, of course, the biggest stock market loss of equity of a company in history with Meta, yeah. with, with, with Zuckerberg. He was out of pocket for 31 million personally. It was well Ooh. over 200 billion. Billion with the B. Yeah. I hope the judgment of God continues mercilessly on mainstream and social media and that alternatives raise up to it. Yeah. Jacob, what about the inflation? I mean, it's, it's, it's another month where, it, according to the numbers, Department of Labor says 7.5%, but it's not 7.5% if you look at the key higher. indicator. But, but the highest 
a spike since 1962, highest one since 1982 in some circles, in some areas. Uh, Department of Labor says used cars are up 40%, gasoline's up 45%, rental cars 30%, food 50% and some, and, and, you know, chicken and things like that are a little, a little bit different. Uh, it, and there's more trouble up ahead. I mean, at least at least they got that right, the mainstream media. They're finally admitting it's bad and it's going to get worse. Well, I'll tell you, um, there is a very unfair tax law in the United States called FBAR that requires all kinds of reporting of foreign bank accounts held by American citizens who live overseas. I don't just mean things to trace drug money or laundered money or things like that. You know, the villains use the Vatican Bank for that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, just ordinary citizens who live and work abroad. And I have to report the value of my bank accounts and my business income, anything like that. I have a small secular business on the side. I have to report all of this to the IRS annually, but I can't report it as sterling or as euros or as any foreign currency. It has to be reported in dollar equivalency. When you have a weak dollar, in the short term, it helps the trade balance or imbalance because it makes American exports cheaper and it makes imports more expensive. That's the short to medium term. In the medium to long term, however, you are weakening the dollar as the basis of the world currency reserve. And China is smelling blood. And people are too stupid to know it. When you ask a serious question of Laurie Bush or of Tliab or of Omert, or of Alexandra Ortega Cortez particularly, they can't answer a serious question. They're too <laughs> ignorant, and in the case of Alexandra Ortega Cortez, too stupid. This is a stupid woman. You know, 40,000 jobs in her district were lost because of her demands that Amazon not be given a tax credit to recover building crops and things like this over a period of time. She said, the money should be spent on schools and health services. The money doesn't <laughs> even exist yet. It's not a subsidy. It's a tax credit to get them to invest in, in job creation. And she was yeah. too stupid to know it. Now, well, if anybody never... is stupid enough to vote for somebody stupid, you deserve to lose 40,000 jobs. I don't like to see people get shot dead, but if you live in the south side of Chicago and you voted for Lori Lightfoot and you get shot dead in the south side of Chicago, that's what you voted for. Incredible. You're reaping what you sowed. I mean, these these, these congresswomen, these congressmen, they, they've never held a job or, so, or produced a service or a product. They, they couldn't have a clue how business works, how reality Not works. Not a clue. Yeah, and they lectured us about economy and how it should work. And of course, this is because a judgment. Priority girls running the national defense, saying their priorities <laughs> should be inclusivism. You know, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, uh, Jacob. This is not a joke, but you know, we have thirty trillion dollars. We just hit thirty trillion dollars, United States in debt, U.S. debt. And uh, people are wondering, where did that money go? Well, we talked about one of those last week. Was about BLM. BLM is being investigated over $60 million that certain states gave. They have no accountability. Maybe they're in that home in Topanga Canyon or something like that. But now a $30 million grant. This is true. This is, this is not fake in any sort of way. Even the liberal media admitted it. Uh, they want to make give $30 million to underprivileged communities uh, and allow community organizers to provide crack pipes, crack pipes to crack drug pipes. users. Crack pipes. It's and unreal. Thank God freebasing didn't exist when I was a cocaine addict. But in my youth, I was strung out on cocaine at one point rather heavily. Uh, and thank God I got saved. That was bad enough. Using my nose as a vacuum cleaner for cocaine and injecting it, that was bad enough. When freebasing came out, 
and crack came out. Oh my good Lord, it is deadly. And now the government wants to give the apparatus to do it at the taxpayer's expense. You're supposed to pay taxes to help subsidize people destroying their lives. Yeah, well, if you I, voted I for Biden, that's what you voted for. Don't yeah. tell me that you, how sorry you are. Your, your son is in a body bag. You put him there. Mm. This is to uh, basically advance racial equity. That, that, that's what's under <laughs> racial equity. Give people, I, I yeah, give people the apparatus to consume illegal and deadly drugs in the name of racial equity, equality. Let fentanyl come in across the border like there's no tomorrow in the name of human rights. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it almost sounds like a bad joke, but it's, it's, it's a real thing. It's proof that the Democratic uh, Party establishment wants to kill the very people whose rights and interests they falsely claim to represent. That's right. It's going to be that's minorities, right. first of all, who suffer the ramifications of these policies. Yeah. They want well, dead well, blacks. They want dead Hispanics. They want yeah. They want it. Yeah, the policies in Chicago, where's the violent area? Where are the most dangerous areas? Communities that have, yeah, communities that have uh, Hispanics and black communities, they're the ones that are suffering for it. Families that can they can't afford anywhere else, so they have to live in this area. And uh, and yet the violence continues. Well, now it's drug abuse. Now, San Francisco tried to do this, Jacob, a while ago. Uh, the heroin uh, epidemic was so bad that they, they, they decided that the best thing to do for that community is to give them clean needles, clean needles. This was an actual San Francisco policy to give clean needles at parks. And, and of course, Something people took that them. Is literally, now, now, technically, it is aiding and abetting in the commission of a felony. Taking taxpayer money in order to aid and abet in the commission of a felony that is destructive to society and to the addict himself or herself. Yes, that's right. That uh, is how wicked it is, but that is also how insanely stupid it is. It, 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 it's almost like. You, you almost can't believe it, but until you see the documents, $30 million going for this. Uh, but I guess the other places where it's going, it's for war. And let's talk about war for a minute, Jacob. Ukraine seems to be ramping up, ramping up. Uh, of course, you had meetings in uh, called the Normandy group. Germany, France, Ukraine, and Russia met. Uh, Ukraine basically says they're not going to listen even to the eastern provinces of, of Ukraine that want to be independent. They don't want to have any anything to do with them. The, the, the meeting basically broke down. I, I don't know if this means that we're still going to end the process of war, but it seems to be ramped up, ramped up. Uh, February 14th is when Russia has to decide whether they recognize those eastern provinces as, as separate states. Uh, but it, it's, it's you know, we have troops in, 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 in Europe. Russia has troops in the Ukraine, near Ukraine. It just seems to be more, uh, maybe they're stalling. I don't know, but it seems to be that they're ramping up more direct. Um, uh, the State Department, our State Department, is ramping up the rhetoric against Russia. Okay, the question more more. is, the question is, Omaha and Greenville, North Carolina, you know, and and, and, and Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Sacramento, California and Yakima, Washington, are a long way from the Ukraine. Germany, you can drive it in a day if you pushed it. That's right, that's right. Where are the German troops? Where are the French troops? No, no leave one... it to the Americans and give Uncle Sam the bill. It's the same that's old right. story. That's the money, that's where it's going. Now, Jacob, let's talk about the uh, uh, one thing that was completely, it, it just, I, I couldn't believe it, so absurd. We were here Friday, we finished recording, news came out, Biden was lifting sanctions. Now, over the week, we found out what that meant. This is the betrayal of Israel, the betrayal of the chosen, basically swapping Israel for Iran, throw Israel down the river, bring Iran into their 
sphere of influence. I think they see Iran as more of an ally than Israel, which is which is crazy. The State Department doesn't know what they're dealing with. Uh, but Jacob, what's your thoughts on it? I mean, he literally lifted. Well, this sanctions. is Joe Obama. It's not just it's not just Biden. It's Joe Obama. It's a perpetuation of the policies of the Obama administration via Susan Rice. It's Klein and people like this who are pulling the strings. Um, it was that Valerie, whatever her name was. Oh, Valerie Queen. Jarrett. Yeah, Valerie Jarrett and so forth. Yeah. These policies are not new. They're just perpetuated from Obama. This past week, Biden unfroze 28 billion US in frozen Iranian assets to help fund a regime given to the prop to the propagation of anti-Semitism to the strategic threat to the Persian Gulf and to the Emirates committed to the destruction of human rights, particularly of homosexuals, women, and that is committed to funding terror to kill Americans. And he gave them 28 billion, just like Obama gave them unfrozen assets. Then he removed the oil embargo. And then he re-allowed them back into the SWIFT system, reversing everything the Trump administration did to stop them from developing nuclear capability. And he did it the same week where they were testing new missiles capable of hitting Tel Aviv, Saudi Arabia, anywhere else they wanted in the region almost. The same week. Well, you gave them all this money, Mr. Biden, so they can, they can kill Americans, you're paying for it. And you let them back in SWIFT and you took the oil embargo off. Well, what did America get in return? Nothing, nothing. I cannot find a euphemism for betrayal. This is shameful. It is shameful beyond belief. Not only uh, that, the they're, using, they're using Ukraine to divert attention away Absolutely. from what's really happening in the Middle East. It's, it's been their tactic, Jacob. Look over here while they're doing this. It is, it's just classic, classic Bidenism or it's Obamaism. Daniel 10. It's Daniel 10. These men are demonized. Now, let's talk about that, Jacob, because this is a big, important part. Now, the left, the democratic, Marxist, communist, Islam, uh, Islamic-loving left, sees Israel as, as an evil entity they see israel and even among jews even among jews like schumer and schiff they see israel as an apartheid evil state don't tell me that they see iran as the good state but the sad thing is they do they see iran as the good state this is the good evil evil good is, is that what we're it's a blindness and certainly madness. it's what isaiah said what do those are called good evil and evil good but you understand that these people are out for money and power. It doesn't matter if you're good or evil. It matters how you serve their interests. Here, yeah. I partially disagree with Ben Shapiro. What did Ben say about uh, Ben? About thinks, ben thinks that the left are utopian ideologues who think if you really forfeit power to them, they can solve the world's problems. And they honestly believe that. It ends justifies the means way of thinking. They think if you just give them the power, they can clean up the mess that the world is in. Uh, instead of recognizing the fact that they're aggravating it, making it worse, and to a degree caused it. That's what he thinks. I don't completely disagree with him. He's right what he says, but he's wrong in what he negates. It's about power and mm -hmm. something else. It's about Daniel chapter 10 concerning Iran, as we've said for many years. Ben Shapiro is an Orthodox Jew. He understands what's happening politically. I only pray that the scales fall off his eyes 
so he'll understand what's happening spiritually. It's the book of Daniel, chapter 10. We've been saying this about Iran for years, and we're not the only ones. Apparently, the left Marxist group, the, the Democrats, they see Hezbollah, they see uh, Hamas, they see the, 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 the Houthis and, 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 and the proxy uh, rebel yeah. groups in Syria and Lebanon that are under control of Iran, they see them as assets. They see them as some form of uh, assets to their to American interests. As a word, is no longer about Egypt or Israel or Saudi Arabia. That's correct. They, 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 they that move. is correct. They move. Yeah. They take the terrorist surrogates of Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, chief among them, also the Houthis down in uh, in Yemen. And with indifference towards the ideological and re religious ideology hatred of these groups, they're quite happy to fund their funder. It, it's yeah, a betrayal. It, it, now look, yeah. I've seen this kind of betrayal before. The way Bush and Cheney sold us down the river to the House of Saud after September 11th. Right. I saw what Obama did. This kind of betrayal by corrupt governments and a corrupt White House is not new, but it's getting conspicuously unbelievable. To get I nothing mean, for it, to make these concessions yeah. and get nothing for it? Even Obama didn't go that far. He would have if he could have. This is this is this is Joe Biden, and this is the State Department, and to a large degree, Jacob. This is the judgment of God with with wicked leaders to this nation, who, for a long time now, whether it was Nixon, Clinton, Bush, Obama, I beg God in the name of Jesus Christ that the judgment of God will not come upon America because of Biden, based on yeah. Genesis twelve one to three. I. Yeah. Beg God for mercy on America that all of his judgment will come on the Biden administration. And, and, and these presidents that have gone it. before us. Sorry? Yeah. I'll say these presidents that have gone before us, you know, whether it was Clinton yes. or Bush or Obama or, or, or Biden now, uh, they have really poked at the, at the apple of God's eye. They've really poked they at have. it. And at some point, Jacob, it has to come to... Zechariah 12. Well, I urge so, those yeah. who listen to us, pray that God raises his hand against the Biden administration and removes that wicked administration from power, that the judgment of God falls upon it. Because if God's judgment does not fall upon it, it'll fall upon America because of them. Now, there are those who misunderstand the scriptures who say we should pray for those in authority. Yeah, we should. Why? That we may live peaceable lives. I pray that their plans to call Christian homeschooling families and parents terrorists, I pray that those plans will fail, that we may live peaceable lives. I pray that they will not get their conversion therapy so homosexuals and lesbians can be evangelized that we may live peaceable lives, that we can carry on the work of the gospel without persecution or without obstruction. I pray that Biden will not do that. In that sense, I will pray for Biden or Obama, but I pray that God removes them. He establishes kings and removes kings. I pray and I urge other Christians to pray that the iron fist of the almighty comes down on the Joe Obama administration swiftly and terribly. I remember, Jacob, a couple of times, and, and, and you remember this quite well, uh, when presidents decided to act against Israel, uh, something would happen to them. Now, now this was a Clinton thing uh, with, the, with the Lewinsky situation. This was the Bush thing with Katrina. This is the uh, the Obama thing with the, when when the uh, um, when he decided to give to Iran, a lot of these things God moved against their presidency, against their administration, and things didn't go well for them. Now every president that tries to do this, divide Jerusalem, come against Israel, uh, God in his 
in his judgment and God in his swift judgment will come against that uh, administration. Now, if God is going to allow this to happen, of course, this is, this is God's will. Um, but it just seems like we are headed toward as a nation because of our leaders and, and, and perhaps not just him, but the whole aspect of leadership in America has lifted up their hand against God. And uh, God doesn't take too kindly to yes. uh, when he comes uh, against his people. But as you point out, it also speaks of the backslidden nature of Israel and the Jews, that you have people like Schumer and, 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 and Unbelievable. Schiff and Nadler and, and Feinstein and uh, certainly Blumenthal. Schiff and Wa yeah, Blumenthal. Blumenthal and Washington Schultz, yeah. who are yeah. part of this, who are in the yeah. same party with the squad, with Tliab and with Omer. When you have this kind of betrayal, again, Americans think of Benedict Arnold. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, that's how they think of, 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 the, of the quintessential traitor. Okay. That's how they think. Okay. Well, the quintessential, or, or Christians think of Judas as the quintessential yeah. <laughs> traitor. Okay. Well, the quintessential traitor of Judaism is Menlaus from the story of mm -hmm. Hanukkah. And you've got That's no right. shortage of Menlauses today. <laughs> uh, a couple of things shake up and we'll be done. Uh, but this, this is, is in light of this. Yeah, but this is in light of this, what's going on, the betrayal of Israel. Is the same Democratic left, um, I guess you could call it government that we have. It's also very for abortion, very radically pro-abortion. In fact, uh, you can say Biden and Harris has been the, probably the most radical president, vice president uh, on abortion we ever had. Uh, and they want to make it all the way up to full term, full term abortion. It's just yeah. crazy. I mean, uh, beyond belief, the, the, the fact that Texas abortions are down 60 percent in, in Texas, abortions are down 60 percent. They are making war against Texas because they believe other states like Arizona, Mississippi, Alabama will follow the same suit and have this. Uh, state, states' rights to protect babies. They are vehemently against them, and they say nothing against the, the, the killing of babies, and they say nothing against, and I'll leave you with this, the anti-Semitism that is going on in America that is very highly underreported. New York City, crimes against Jews, 300%, up 300% in January. Synagogues, Orthodox Jews, the synagogue in Texas, of course, which the FBI lied about, uh, they say nothing. They, they go against it. So people, it is frustrating, but it's also, we need to give it into the hands of the Lord. Uh, Jacob, final thoughts. Uh, I'll leave you with, with, with the last two in connection to what they did to Israel this past week. Genesis 12, 1 to 3 has historically stood the test of time. God cannot lie. Nobody has ever persecuted Israel and the Jews, nor persecuted the believing church and not come under the judgment of God. I believe the bubonic plague, which wiped out a third of the population of Europe, was a judgment for what the Roman Catholic Church did to the pre-Reformation believers in Europe and in Britain. I really believe that. And I also believe that when Britain revoked the Bellflower Declaration, London, Coventry, and Liverpool were bombed Britain became a second-rate power, never to emerge again. I honestly believe that when Germany built walls around the Jewish ghettos of Warsaw and other places, and any Jew climbing over that wall was machine gunned, a wall was built around the capital of Germany, the Reich, and any German climbing over that wall was machine gunned. I really believe the Spanish Inquisition happened when Spain turned against the Jews. How much longer was it before Francis Drake sunk the Armada? I really believe Genesis 12, 1 to 3 has historically played out. I believe it is a major factor, maybe the major factor, and why the invincible, seemingly, Soviet empire. The Soviet empire lasted 70 years. By historical standards, that's nothing. 
other empires lasted centuries. Rome, the, the, the Holy Roman Empire, the British Empire, the French Empire, they lasted centuries. The Soviet Empire lasted 70 years. And they all did the same thing. They persecuted Israel and the Jews. They made themselves enemies of it. They cursed Israel. And they, in some way, persecuted the true church. They all came under God's judgment. I am pleading God to have mercy on America and Britain. I'm pleading that that judgment will instead be brought down on Barack Obama and on Biden and on these evil politicians who betrayed not only Israel, they've not only betrayed Israel. When you're financing Iran, you betrayed America. I pray that God's judgment will come and again that it will come quickly in Jesus' name. Very sobering words, Jacob. I just, I, uh, as you were speaking, I, th I thought of Obadiah 1. Well, there's only one chapter in Obadiah. Obadiah 1, 15. 15 and yeah. What the Lord says. Yeah, what the Lord says about it. And, 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 and the Lord is very serious about it. And no nation has ever gotten away with it. There's no reason to believe America, England, you name it, Iran will ever get away with it. Uh, Israel has a destiny with the Messiah. The Jews have a destiny with the yeah. Lord. They have a controversy with the Messiah. That's be that's what God's going to deal with them, and any nation that gets involved with that will be grie uh, At least Zechariah tells us to deal with Jerusalem will be grievously hurt. I think yep. that's what's happening, and I think very few people see it. Very few people see it uh, because they think it's a political thing. But you go beyond that, Jacob. You, you talk about the, the spiritual reality that is in, be in in back of the political situation that's going on because that's. That's real. That's the real stuff. Like people don't know why is the State Department behaving like this? Why is Obama behaving like this? Why is Joe Biden behaving like this? Well, they're not dealing with the mullahs. They're not dealing with Razin. They're dealing with uh, basically the Prince of Persia. You know, they're dealing with yep. an evil spirit. A, a, a you know, a, what would you call it in Hebrew? I forget the Hebrew word, but it's a principality. Yep, that's, that's right. That's right. So anyway, Jacob, I want to leave you with that. Very sobering but very real. And I pray that all of us will pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray Amen. that the gospel to the Jew first and to the Gentiles will continue to go forth, that the work of Moriel continues to in Israel and in Jerusalem, preaching the gospel to Jew and Gentile, uh, because we're nearing those, those pressure points Amen. Uh, Amen. that God's hand is going to intervene. I believe God's hand will intervene. Um, I guess that's the only thing we could pray for is God to intervene in this situation. Yeah. All right, all Jacob. Thank you so much for listening. Every blessing in Jesus. Hope we catch you next time. Amen. God bless you, Jacob. Well, blessings in Jesus, dear friends. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate your prayers, your support, certainly. But above all, we appreciate the grace of the Lord in having you be with us. If you are blessed, edified, challenged, encouraged by what you have been hearing on Moriel, we would certainly ask you to subscribe, to give us a thumbs up, and to tell your Christian friends about us, and even tell your unsaved friends about us in the hope and prayer they will hear the gospel and become Christians. Thank you so very much. My name is James Jacob Pratch, Moriel Ministries. God bless you all.